Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And in this short video, I will be talking about why mainstream calculus was never rigorous. So let's begin. Now, several centuries have passed since Newton and Leibniz scratched their powdered wigs, wondering how to make sense of their finite difference quotients. So we had Bishop Berkeley, who came along and immediately pointed out the errors in their bogus arithmetic. Um, and it was pretty obvious to anyone who knew uh, algebra and geometry and trigonometry in those days that what Newton and Leibniz had come up with was evidently flawed. So, <clears throat> uh, before I continue, uh, this video is going to be very short, so you can get all the details in my free ebook, which is the most important mathematics book ever written in the history of mankind or womankind, <laughs> chuckle, whichever you prefer. So, if you learned the mainstream calculus, you will no doubt be aware of the bogus definition. And this is it right over here. You've, you usually see this delta replaced by h, but it's more accurate to uh, have a delta there. And <clears throat> the reason for that is that we have this, this little gem here, which is called the epsilonics inequality uh, definition. It's not a definition, it's a very finition. I invented that word, by the way. And very finition means uh, something that has to be proved. Okay. So, in other words, uh, it's given to you and you have to prove it. Now, the problem with this very finition is that you need to know L. But guess what? L is actually the derivative. <laughs> okay. So, you need to know it before it. Now, if you don't use something called the first principles method, then you have to guess it. Okay, so I don't know about you, but guessing in my book is not rigorous because it's not systematic. And why do I say it's not systematic? Because every tangent line, by definition, has a slope. Even vertical tangent lines have a slope. Oh yeah, you may ask, what? Well, don't they have a slope of 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians? Hmm, makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. Okay, in any event. Let's not belabor the point. Uh, this anti-mathematical nonsense was apparently rigorized as what you see here in front of you. Now, this finite difference here is simply an expression which supposedly gets closer and closer to L. Okay, But of course, you need to know L. Otherwise, how can you use this definition or very definition at all? Now. Ignorant mainstream professors find L by using the first principles method. Okay, but it's pretty circular because the first principles method, which is this expression here, means this. Did you get that? Pause your video and just think about that for a while. Okay, this here means this. So it's used, L is used in its very definition. Hmm what do you call that circular isn't it so circular reasoning works because circular reasoning works <laughs> okay so in any event the morons uh, perform all sorts of bogus arithmetic assuming that delta is both zero and not zero depending on their mood so in the above expression delta is not equal to zero and once we get to this expression here q of x delta, then suddenly it turns to zero unless you have an even function. So you're left with two choices. Either use the FBM, which is circular and bogus nonsense, uh, and by some magic find L, or you have to guess L. So <clears throat> um, in any case, the value of Q of x delta must be zero in, in 
in MS, regardless of what very definition you use. Okay, because when you get to this stage here, you, you can wave your hands and jump up and down and scream, but yes, you do set delta equal to zero. It is exactly equivalent to you finding f prime of c. Okay, there is no way any of you in the mainstream, you morons in the mainstream, can refute that. And you either have to adopt a new calculus or constantly have to explain uh, what morons you are to your students. And you're, you're not going to be able to fool your students for long because I'm going to put you out of business. I promise you, your days of bullshit are over if you're a professor of mathematics. Okay, so <clears throat> I have a lot more to say. There are many more reasons why this bullshit fails, okay? And one of the reasons is that there is no such thing as a real number because there is no valid construction of real numbers. Dedekind cuts and Cauchy sequences are mythology, and uh, real analysis is also a joke because it's based on a mathematical object which does not exist and cannot be reified in any shape or form. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short little presentation and I feel good today. That's why I decided to record the video. And I hope to be chatting to you again at some future time. Uh, to all those who are my subscribers, please uh, spread the news. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to my channel. And uh, watch my videos and read my articles and learn more about mathematics than you have learned in all your school years. So I leave you with us now. Until next time, this is a new calculus channel and I'm John Gabriel, the great John Gabriel. <laughs> Goodbye.